Hello and welcome to today's video. Today we are going to talk about linear combinations and the linear hull or the span of a set of vectors. The idea here is to find a nice compact representation for a vector space. And we'll do this by starting with a set of vectors and then building the vector space from that set. And of course, the ultimate goal is to get that set as small as possible, but that is going to be the topic of one of the next videos. So today we'll start with linear combinations and span. So, as I said, the idea of this is to find a compact representation of a vector space. We will first define the notion of linear combinations. Linear combination basically means if we have a set of vectors, then we can scale each of those vectors, meaning we can multiply each vector with a scalar, and we can then add the results. And this will produce a new vector. That way that sum of scaled vectors is called a linear combination. So here is the definition. We'll start with the vector space. So let V be a vector space. Again, usually imagine R to the N. We have some number, let's call it R, some natural number and R vectors V1 to Vn. And for each of those vectors, we'll also have a scalar. We call those lambda1 to lambda R. Sorry, that is supposed to be an R, of course. Then the following expression is called a linear combination. That expression simply is, we'll scale the first vector by lambda one, the second by lambda two and so on, up to lambda r vr. Or in a more compact way, this is the sum from one to r over the summation index i, and we sum up over lambda i vi. So this is called a linear combination of the vectors v1 to vr. Furthermore, we'll define what the span of a set of vectors is. And by the span, what we do is we just um, try to, to figure out all possible linear combinations of a given set of vectors. And that set of all vectors that can be obtained through linear combinations of that given set, that is called its span. So, for a subset M contained in V, the span, or sometimes also called the linear hull,
of m is the set of all vectors that can be obtained as a linear combination of finitely many vectors in that set M. Or more formally, the span of M is defined as the set of all vectors V in capital V such that there exists a number R in the natural numbers, vectors V1 to VR in M, and lambda 1 to lambda R in R, so scalars, such that V is the linear combination represented by lambda i vi. Okay, so the set of all possible linear combinations of finitely many vectors, and usually our set M will be finite anyway in the applications that we will consider. Um, this set is called the span or the linear hull of our set M. And one special case that we'll also um, write down, we'll define the span of the empty set to basically be the empty sum, and the empty sum is zero. So the space that only contains the zero vector will be considered the span of the empty set. Will turn out to be a useful definition later on. the span of the empty set is defined to be span of empty set that as I said that is by definition this span is the vector space that only contains the zero vector. Okay, let's have a look at a couple of examples. We'll start with an example that we know already from a application in one of the previous videos, but you don't really have to recall that. So we just define the set M to be one, two, one, three, seven, four, and four, 10, nine. And you might remember that from our example on portfolio. So, we solved a system of linear equations that contained these vectors here. And what we found was there was a linear combination that produced a certain given right-hand side. And in particular, what we found out is that 50 times that first vector plus 10 times the second vector plus 15 times the third one produced the right hand side of 140, 320, 225. What we can see from that is that this right hand side is, of course, a linear combination of the vectors on the left. So 
in our new vocabulary, this vector 140, 320, 225, is a linear combination of the vectors in M. Or we could also rephrase this as saying this vector, 140, 320, 225, is contained in the span of M because it can be represented as a linear combination of finitely many vectors in M. Now we'd like to know a little more about that span of M. We know that there is this one vector in the span. What about others? Are there any more vectors in the span? That would be easy to answer. Of course, there are more vectors in the span. But do they have a structure? What, what is the vector space that is spanned by M. So this is the question that we're going to answer now. What exactly is that span of M here? Or in other words, let's rephrase that a little. We could also say, given an arbitrary vector, under which conditions would that be contained in our set M? So, given an arbitrary vector, let's call that vector B. And obviously, the span of M is a subset of R3, because those vectors have three coordinates, they are in R3. So given an arbitrary vector in R3, is that contained in the span of M or under which conditions on its coordinates is that vector contained in the span of M? What to find out, what we have to do is we have to see whether the vector can be represented as a linear combination of finitely many vectors from M. As M only contains finitely many vectors, three to be precise, uh, we can just write down a linear combination of those three vectors. And if it turns out we don't need all of the three, then some of the lambdas associated to the vectors will just be zero in our linear combination. That's absolutely allowed. So in other words, what we have to do is we have to find suitable lambdas to represent that vector as a linear combination. So again, a rephrasal of a question. Can we find lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 in R such that These lambdas yield a linear combination such that we obtain our vector B as a result. So such that lambda 1 times our first vector 1, 2, 1 plus lambda 2 times our second vector 3, 7, 4 plus lambda 3 times our third vector, 4, 10, 9, such that this linear combination is equal to the right-hand side that we want, B1, B2, B3. Well, how do we find out whether these lambdas exist and what the values for those lambdas are if they exist? Well, actually what we have here is a system of linear equations in the variables lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. If you just look at this line by line, you see that the first line is an equation 
involving lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. The second line is an equation involving lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3. And the same is true for the third line. So this translates into the following system of linear equations. First equation is 1 times lambda 1 plus 3 times lambda 2 plus 4 times lambda 3. And I'm writing this in tableau form right away. Right hand side here is B1. The second row will be 2 times lambda 1, 7 times lambda 2, and 10 times lambda 3 with the right hand side of B2. And the last row is 1 time lambda 1, 4 times lambda 2, 9 times lambda 3 with the right hand side of B3. So the question here is, does that have a solution or which are possible conditions for the right hand side such that the system has a solution? So again, we rephrased our question and it would now read for which B does this SLE have a solution? And those are exactly the Bs that lie in the span of M. Well, as I said, you know this example already. Um, and we have solved this SLE for a very specific right-hand side for the one that I've shown you above. Um, and in doing so, we have also computed the echelon form of this left-hand side to blow. So in particular, we know the rank. And this says what is sufficient to characterize whether there is a solution or not. So from an earlier example, we know that the rank of this left-hand side here well, this is this this part here the rank of this part is 3 because if we transform that to echelon form we will find that the resulting system has three pivot elements and that is of course the same as the rank of that same system, including the right-hand side as an additional column, no matter what those Bs actually are, right? We'll have pivots in every row, so the rank cannot increase. And of course, it cannot decrease either. Now, what does that mean? Well, that means there is a solution for each possible B in R3. So there's no conditions on B anymore. So that means the SLE has a solution for all B in R3. And that in turn gives us the result that we wanted. And that is to see that the span of M is R3 because every vector in R3 can be obtained as linear combinations of the vectors in B. So the span of M is the space of three. One more example, we will consider a similar system now, but we'll add one more vector. So our new M here is this system here. Let's see, we have the vectors 1, 0, 0, 3, 1, 0, 4, 2, 1, and 2, minus 1, minus 1. Now if we consider the first three of these vectors, and again, think of those as vectors 
in a tableau for a system of linear equations. And we can talk about the, the rank of that system. So as the rank of this left hand side of the first three vectors only, one, zero, zero, three, one, zero, four, two, one, this rank is already three. Now we don't even need the fourth vector. We could add it, the rank wouldn't change. Um, with the same argument as before, that means the span of our set M is R3. Well, what does that mean? Of course, the span can never be larger than R3 because M is a subset of R3. The span of the first three vectors is already R3. So the fourth vector is not really necessary to obtain that span. Now that means, in other words, this fourth vector, this vector two minus one minus one is actually redundant. We could do without it. What I mean by redundant is the span of M is the same as the span of M without that last vector. So if we remove that, we don't lose anything for the span. Well, why is that the case? The reason for that is that this last vector is already a linear combination of the first three vectors. It has to be. The first three vectors span R3, and that last vector obviously is an element of R3, so it has to be a linear combination of those. I'll even give you the specifics here. So what we have is 2 minus 1 minus 1 that can be obtained as a linear combination of those three vectors. And let's have a quick look at how this can be achieved. So first note that the last line here contains zeros in the first two vectors and only a non-zero in the last one here. So to obtain this coordinate here, we have to use the last vector. The others can't contribute anything to that. And that means the linear factor, the coefficient in front of that vector, needs to be a minus one. Now let's look at the second vowel. Again, you'll notice there is a zero in the first vector, a non-zero in the second and the third. The factor for the third is already fixed. We can't change that anymore. So to obtain that minus one here, the first vector can't do anything useful. We have to use the second vector. What we have here is, this gives us a value of minus two already. We need a value of minus one. So we need to add one. Here's a factor of one. So that means the coefficient here must be plus one. And finally, let's look at the first row. So these two vectors here, through that we obtain a value of one times three plus minus one times four, so that's minus one. We want a vac value of two, and the only way to get this is to work with this entry here. So, you have a minus one, you want a value of two, that means we need to add three. So the coefficient here must be three. And you hopefully notice what we did here in effect was we used backward substitution implicitly. So this set of vectors here, that is basically a tableau in echelon form. And we just use backward substitution 
to determine the factors that we need to get a given right hand side, this vector here. So, what did we achieve? Well, we explicitly showed that this vector is a linear combination of the first three already. And of course, the set of linear combinations of a certain set of vectors will not increase if I add linear combinations of vectors I already have to that set. Because I can always get that from the vectors that were already there. So in this case, the first three vectors are sufficient to get the whole span of M. It doesn't help if we add any linear combinations derived from those. So the message here is this vector is a linear combination of those first three. So every linear combination of all four vectors can be expressed using only the first three vectors. And in that sense, that last vector is redundant in the set. We'll refine this notion of redundancy, actually define what that, what, that, what that means in an accurate and precise way in one of the upcoming videos. And of course, I hope I'll see you then.